Hi everyone, it is Carrie Biscalonis from Reset Brain and Body here to talk to you this week for Mental Health Mondays. So I want to talk about something that has been somewhat relevant in the online world lately, and that is the position that influencers find themselves in the space of self-care, self-help, and even mental health care. A lot of you have been talking about the controversy with Rachel Hollis and someone who a lot of people really have trusted in as a voice for women and women empowerment and for taking charge of your of your own health and well-being. And unfortunately, she has now come up and said, well, she doesn't want to be relatable and that's really caught some people off guard right it is the idea that someone who's supposed to be espousing advice is intentionally being unrelatable in addition to her using her platform and place of privilege in somewhat of a tone deaf way and this is where i want to talk to you all about how we are all consuming self-help information and that we owe it to ourselves to be more critical of how we're receiving this information. There's nothing wrong with getting advice and getting tips and best practices and tools online from some of your favorite names and, and voices in this field. But there comes a difference between taking all of that at face value and adopting it versus doing the work for yourself. I think a lot of times we can easily be influenced by people that have the loudest voice. And we just have to sit back and question of, is their voice actually the best one for me to listen to? Are they speaking from a place of authenticity or much like a lot of things in our society, is it driven by some capitalistic type of endeavor? And I bring this up and I know that it is sensitive, but the more and more that we talk about mental health care, the more that I have seen it getting confused with self-care and that sometimes people are minimizing mental health care in a way where we're saying if you just eat healthy and sleep and meditate, all of your issues will go away. And unfortunately, it's oversimplifying something that is really, really intense and deeply layered. Someone's mental health care is not purely <laughs> uh, solved or fixed by getting eight hours of sleep or drinking enough water during the day. We need to talk about the systemic issues that have allowed for intergenerational trauma, poverty, racism, lack of education, lack of resources, no amount of pull yourself up from your bootstraps, meditate 20 minutes a day and eat a green smoothie is going to take that away. And so I want you all to be cautious about where you're receiving information about mental health and how to take best care of you. Because even though there are plenty of tools, mental health care is not a quick fix. And it's not even something that will require you to talk to a therapist weekly about. It starts with awareness. Once we start to become aware of our patterns and our belief systems, and then we have to keep digging in to be really uncomfortable. We can't just slap band-aids on our anxiety and our depression and our trauma and our low self-esteem and our eating disorders. We have to really dig in to do the work. That means we need to work with someone that allows us to sit in our shame and allows us to uncover these parts of ourselves that we have hidden for so long because they feel so disgraceful and embarrassing and just difficult to manage. We have to be brave to look at all the parts of ourselves and turn the leaves over and ask questions and get curious about why we continue to behave the way we do. We need to reconcile our relationships. We need to offer forgiveness and compassion to those that have hurt us. We need to take ourselves as part of the equation, but then also legitimize times when we have been oppressed, times when we have been invalidated, belittled, 
times when the system has worked vehemently against us. So I want you to go with caution and really find the people that allow you to be your own guru. Find the people that give you the space to look more deeply inwards, to keep doing the work that is required to really start to create changes both within us and the system in which we operate. You know, a lot of times we think that mental health care is simply, you know, taking care of our own needs, but can we, it be even bigger? Can we do things on a larger systemic level and advocating for changes so that there aren't so many traumas that are recycled generation after generation because we've helped people with substance abuse we fix some inherent issues with why families operate the way they do. The education system changes to support and empower everyone. There's less pressure in our communities to be perfect. So filter your feed. Know that it is not a one size fits all approach. Know that self care is not the same as mental health care and to be cautious about the things that other people are saying about how you can improve your own mental health because it's so layered and it is much, much, much deeper than some of the things that you might find in a book or on a feed. I encourage you to continue to have this conversation and you know, share your thoughts because the work is never done, but at the same time, you might also pop in and out of doing the work, right? You might want to go really deep for uh, two weeks even, and then say, you know what? Okay, I've reconciled part of this and now I need to just put it into practice. Ideally, you're not in therapy for the rest of your life because you will end up having the wisdom to know the answers for yourself. And we start changing the systems around this to continue to contribute to mental health care issues, to that intergenerational trauma that then creates systems that allow us to continue to feel anxious and depressed and have low self-esteem. So we all can do this work, but it is much bigger than self-care. I'm going to pop a blog post in this that talks about the difference between wellness and mental health care, wellness or self care and mental health care. I asked you to just be compassionate with yourself because again, I know that this is just all hard. <laughs> and in the meantime, if you're not ready to do those deep dives, which is okay, right? It's, ugh, it's intense then have a healthy lifestyle. Make choices that feel healthy, but remember that that's not mental health care entirely. Getting good sleep and exercise and deep breathing so you don't react, that's just living a healthy lifestyle. So know yourself best and what you need. The best guru is you. Use a trained professional to help you through the traumas and the deep stuff that make you stuck and unclear. Because with that clarity, eventually you will always be your own best guide and you won't need anyone else's advice and you won't need anyone to tell you to wash your face <laughs> because you will have your own inner wisdom. So you won't be disappointed when people disappoint you. All of the things in your life that have happened to you, it clouds that self direction. And so what we're trying to do is just clear, clear some of the clutter so that you again, can be your own best guide. Please drop any comments in so that we can continue to have a discussion about this. Um, but maybe the first thing you can do is just go through your feed and filter the things that aren't working for you anymore. The things that feel like too surface level that don't actually serve you. All right. Take care. Thank you. Happy Mental Health Monday. <laughs>